Great news this week, earlier this week, Fort Siloso has been gazetted as a protected monument. It's the first one not on the mainland of Singapore, and now it will uh, be uh, properly taken care of and noted as a national monument. Joining us now to talk about this great moment for a, an amazing old structure, Dr. John Kwok, the co-founder of Total Heritage, and Saifullah Kamaluddin, the Culture and Heritage Section at Sentosa Development Corporation. Gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to the show, and congratulations on this great announcement. Hello there, Dr. Kwok. Right, let's jump Hi. straight in and start with you, Dr. Kwok. Oh, sure. Straight in, why was Fort Siloso selected as a national monument, in your view, and what is it that gives it such great historical significance? Well, thank you for having us on the show. Uh, it's, great, it's, good, um, it's a good question. Uh, fort Siloso, I think all of us have at one point in time visited the fort, but it is a well-preserved fort, one that has many layers of history in it. It's um, defenses protected Singapore in the earlier, uh, also in the late 19th century. And during the Second World War, it took part in the Battle for Singapore. It defended uh, parts of Singapore. And finally, during the 60s, uh, during the period of confrontation, it protected Capo Harbour from possible enemy saboteurs. So it has a long history. And visiting the fort, you can actually see many of these layers of history. So what's, what's interesting about the gazetting is that as Glenn mentioned earlier, it's the first national monument to be on an island that's off Singapore. And the gazetting of this fort uh, uh, also meant that 11 structures, you know, it's a huge compound and a huge amount of structures were actually brought together at one go and became national monument. Fantastic. And Saifullah, let me ask you, uh, thank you for coming on. You're part of uh, Sentosa Development Corporation. Of course, you guys must be excited and, and ecstatic. You just recently launched the uh, Sentosa Heritage Trail, which I took part in. Fantastic, which Fort Soloso is a part of. Why is it so important to you and the folks at Sentosa that you now have a gazetted monument? Um, yeah, so absolutely agree with you, Neil. Um, thank you so much for that. Uh, we, we are very humbled by the... Uh, uh, the declaration of a national monument at our site of the mainland. That's the first one. <laughs> and yeah. um, I think what's important to us is that the, uh, uh, what's significant is the place has been there, I think for more than 144 years. And it is timely that, you know, this year marks the 80th um, anniversary of the fall of Singapore. And um, it's a testament to Singapore's defense story. And it's also, it achieves the, uh, the highest, uh, you know, achievement by far uh, to be a national monument. And as, as what uh, uh, Dr. John has, has mentioned earlier on, um, Fort Siloso has been through uh, a series of episodes of, of, uh, of the early, uh, the old trading post to, to the fall of Singapore, um, to the uh, merger with Malaya and the Confrontasi period, and up till today, an on-site military museum. So I think it's, it's a very unique site and, and, and we are honored to, be, to, to receive such, uh, uh, such recognition. We're speaking with uh, Saifullah Kamaluddin the, of the Culture and Heritage Section of Sentosa Development Corporation and Dr. John Kwok, the co-founder of Total Heritage uh, and a historian himself. And, and Dr. Kwok, let's come back to you. So now that this has been gazetted, what does that designation actually mean for the physical structures? How, what will be different? What will be considered now? What will be Will there be more money for its upkeep? What actually happens in the Singapore context when something is gazetted? Well, it, it, when the monument, well, for a national monument, it meant that it achieved a certain level of uh, recognition. And along that comes with uh, expert help, for example, from the National Heritage Board in examining ways to better preserve and also better access to it. And that's, I think, the key thing, preserving it, but at the same time, uh, making access easier, better, and you can talk about uh, improving, say, for example, access, wayfinding uh, information. And I think they can also tap on certain resources to help uh, engage experts to help improve and mm. preserve and present the fort in a much more better light. I mean, I'm not saying that it's bad now. It's, it's an extraordinary well-preserved site. Yeah. Uh, but I think what we're looking for is what can what the more authentic areas can be present to the public 
when you visit the fort next time, you, I think you can expect a better wayfinding, uh, a better experience overall. And visiting the site in the future will also mean that you're actually visiting something historically significant, a site that has a national uh, monument status. And I think that gives a, a different experience because I think, you know, Sentosa, Fort Siloso, Fort Siloso has been there for a long time. But when you visit Fort Siloso, like, do you actually visit Fort Siloso? What can you actually learn from it? And I think more information will, will, will start appearing and we can start uh, putting, situating Fort Siloso's history in the larger history of Singapore. Well, Sai Fuller, you heard the man. He's putting the pressure on. You're an employee of Sentosa <laughs> Development Corporation. You heard him. They want better access, more information, and a, and a more well-rounded experience. I mean, I'm, I don't know what you know about future plans, but what does <laughs> Sentosa have in mind for Fort Siloso? Now you're gazetted. Mm, so uh, to answer that question... Um, I think one of the uh, the, the main uh, overarching plan for Sentosa, we have a sustainable Sentosa uh, plan till 2030. So I think we, uh, in totality, we are looking at the culture and heritage as an island and how we are going to move forward. Um, of course, with uh, guidance from the National Heritage Board and now with the site being gazetted, uh, we also take reference and um, advice from the preservation sites and monument. So I think this is where... Um, um, all efforts uh, in the table and and we do the best that we can um, you know to uh, to ensure that Fort Siloso will keep going and improve and a better experience for all visitors locals and also to welcome our tourists to our attraction yeah fantastic really interesting and we had on uh uh, Tian Kui Eng, uh, your CEO for Sentosa yeah. Development Course, uh, uh, several weeks ago, <laughs> talking about the Golden Jubilee for Sentosa. Uh, is this a, a happy coincidence that this is being gazetted in the Golden Jubilee year, or is that always kind of part of the plan as far as what you know? It is really um, unexpected because we, we only had plans for the, uh, the Jubilee year, which is our 50 years um, celebration for Sentosa. And... Um, I mean, in, in tandem with that, uh, when the news came in where, you know, we were, we were proposed to be a, a national monument site, that was a brilliant news for Sentosa. <laughs> and, and, and we wanted, it, and it encourages, to, it, it encourages to do more, and, and we are moving towards the, uh, what, can, what else can we do for, for Singaporeans, uh, for tourists mm. in, in, in this on-site military museum? What else can we do to, uh, to continue that social and community experience here? So that gives us a, a amplification to do more. There's a lot, mm. like, like, like what you said, there's, there's a lot of pressure, like you mentioned. Yeah, but yeah. we will get there. We will get there. Yeah. Well, yeah. speaking yeah, of I pressure, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Cork. I'm going yeah. there on Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm staying overnight. And I'm taking my daughter to Fort Soloso. No, you're so not staying overnight at the fort. I'd like to. <laughs> that, that could be something. Take, take your sleeping bag with you. That could be something they could look at. You know, an interactive experience. So I'll be there. There's no need to put the red carpet out. So don't worry about that. I'll be inconspicuous. But on a serious point, Dr. Quark. You'll be inconspicuous. I'll be yeah, inconspicuous. Right, as he always is. As I always am. But yeah. I will be there. I will be there. And I love Fort Soloso. It's, it's, uh, it's one of my favorite places. Uh, I always have. And, and Dr. Quark. You know, e even I'm still learning things about it now. For example, one of the myths of Singapore is that the, the, the guns were never used in World War II. It was a complete abject failure. I've since learned that was true. That's not true. They were used and, and used quite productively. I mean, apart from that, Dr. Kwok, what other historical finds or findings do you find fascinating tidbits for our listeners about Fort Soloso? Mm. You're right about the whole part about the guns pointing in the wrong direction. Well, they, they did turn around and they did fire on enemy targets on Singapore Island. It's just that they had the wrong ammunition. They, they needed high explosive ammunition, but I think there were only like a couple of them and used up very quickly. But they did try even with the anti-armor uh, anti ammunition, but the Japanese reported that all they did was dig a big hole in the ground and everything was... <laughs> the, the sound was terrifying. The sound was terrifying. Yeah. After the, 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 the shell landed, everyone was expecting an explosion, but you know, they say it did good trenches for them, but that's about it. Yeah. Uh, Moore's law, what can I say? Young Moore's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, the guns were uh, turned to fire at oil refineries on uh, Pulau Pung, for example, and that was an important 
uh, decision because it destroyed the oil refinery. So it was not possible for the Japanese to make use of such uh, infrastructure for the war effort. So they did participate in the uh, battle for Singapore. But I think one thing that that in this entire myth that we talk about, the guns point in the wrong direction, the fact that it was pointing out to sea meant that the Japanese could not consider uh, an attack from the sea. It was an excellent deterrent. So they had to get they go a long way down Malaya instead. So the guns did keep all the enemy ships away long enough uh, for them to come hmm. down from the north. So it, it did play a vital role in the defense of Singapore. Just being there, just being there alone was enough to scare them off. That's so that I think yes, the terror. So that really worked very well for the British. Unfortunately, they were not prepared for the Japanese coming to the back door. Yeah. Dr. Clark, so, can I just follow on that point real quick? So uh, sure. I understand the point about the Fort Siloso guns, but what about the guns at Labrador Park? Were they allowed? To, were they able to turn those around as well, or were those still only sea-facing? Because that was my understanding uh, about Labrador Park. That's an excellent question, and most people don't realize that Labrador Park and Fort Siloso were actually sister forts. Right. They were twins. Yeah. Like the door gods that defended the Western Passage into Capo Harbour. Mm. So the role of uh, Labrador, uh, Fort Labrador at that time, was essentially to defend that passage of water. So their guns were not designed to actually do that big traversing turn to face inland. Got so uh, as much as as much as they they wanted to, uh, there were limits in the, the the amount of turning space that they had. So they couldn't turn, but the ones in Fort Siloso could. And at Fort Siloso, when you have to go across uh, into Singapore, you can see pretty much why Fort uh, Labrador was there because these two are essentially twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Now, uh, the uh, Fort Siloso is the 81st uh, national monument, uh, as I understand. I just got on Wikipedia, and anyone can do this. They started uh, building started to be gazetted in in 1973, from what I can see, like the Armenian Church and and some of these other ones were from 1973, uh, going way back. Um, does it surprise you that there are only 80? Uh, should there be more, uh, many more nationally gazetted monuments in Singapore? All the usual suspects are there, you know, McDonald House and Bridges, Elgin Bridge and City Hall and the War Memorial, all these regular ones that you would think. Should, should there be more gazetted monuments? Uh, where, where do we stand on the list of potential monuments that could be gazetted? Uh, well, Dr. Kwok, I'll give that to you. Well, I guess if you have too many, then it loses its meaning, I guess. So we need to keep it selective and carefully mm -hmm. selective. Uh, monuments or, or sites are buildings that have a very strong resonance with the people of Singapore and its history uh, mm -hmm. deserves that kind of national recognition. Uh, of course, every year, uh, the National Heritage Board will actually review and analyze and go through a list of possible candidates. Uh, I'm not familiar with the process, but it is an ongoing effort to recognize sites that have a significant bearing in our Singapore's history. And it, the list will definitely increase, but it's not yeah. going to be like we are going to have a bumper year of, say, five or ten. So the numbers will increase, but it's calibrated in the sense that uh, these are specially selected for specific and special reasons. And Sai so Fuller, maybe the final question to you. We are getting lots of comments coming in from readers, and they all seem to circle around a common theme, which is, <laughs> can it have hair con? <laughs> can there be easier accessibility can we well, cycle welcome, there welcome to Sutosa hotline hello i'm the yeah, exactly. hotline yeah exactly right. yeah. can it be easier access now broader point i made a joke you may have heard it on this show last week so i follow that when i went on the heritage trail one of the first things we heard was wow so hot so this so that you are talking about sacrifice, about <laughs> resilience, about Fort Soloso, and people are whining. Defending the nation, right? right? <laughs> you know, Singapore defense. And people are whining because you've got that fantastic, there's a lift now, Glenn. Yeah, there's a lift and everything. takes yeah. you up. You've got this spectacular yeah. walk, treetop yeah. walk behind the uh, Shangri-La Hotel. The Shangri-La, yep. Plaza yeah. Santosa <laughs> that goes straight to Fort Soloso. And, and still, Saifo, and still, we are getting the complaints already uh, on Facebook. What can you say? Can about, you say anything? Can you say anything? Now, look, on a serious note, on a serious note, before you answer, okay. of course, wheelchair access for the uh, people with learned, uh, physical difficulties, of course, we help those guys. But more broadly, what can you do at Fort Soloso? 
for yeah, these think, um, uh, folks? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, on 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 my end, if I can speak on behalf of of Sentosa Development Corporation, um, <laughs> I think one one to one to note is that we we are we are we are always looking into improvements and feedbacks and uh, probably not in the near term. Uh, I think certain requests might have or I'm overwhelmed any organization per se. Uh, yeah. So what, what, what we do look at is um, one is like what you mentioned, uh, the most critical uh, moving forward is social and inclusivity. I think that is something that we look at in, in infrastructure in totality. Mm. And um, apart mm. from that, it's not just Fort Siloso alone. We look at it uh, as a culture and heritage for the island, we look as as uh, one island and how they can move their experience from the beginning up till the uh, the, the, the end of the visit. So that is one one core that we are looking uh, forward, um, uh, moving ahead. Um, the next one that we look at as well are feedbacks, like even air conditions and all that. Right? Uh, these are these are areas that we can improve to balance the site uh, as well as the uh, infrastructure. Because this is a challenge. Because you can't please everyone, okay? yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh, but there are uh, there are different uh, target segments that prefer it to be in that context. Some prefer mm. it to be in the air conditioned mode. Yeah, so we have to have to have to strike a balance there. Um, mm. Likewise for flora and fauna and and the heritage, um, aircon and non aircon. Uh, you know, open space exhibit and non-open space yeah, exhibit, di- yeah. digital and non-digital. So this is where we, we strike a balance. We conduct studies, uh, visibility studies to understand our target se- uh, market segments better. And, and from there, we'll be able to deliver uh, a good experience, uh, a much better experience for our locals mm. and, and our tourists. Well, not bad, uh, Saifullah. He's very good. He's good. He's very good at this, diplomatic. Yeah. I'll say what you. I'll say what you can't say. <laughs> Don't air condition Fort Soloso. <laughs> you can air con the exhibition at the side, yes, sure. where you watch the shows, which is currently air conditioned, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Don't air condition the, the cannons on the outside. I mean, are you with me on this, Glenn? <laughs> yeah, or? totally, totally. I mean, come on, people. Let's you know toughen up a little bit here. If you can't here. pay respects to our forefathers and their sacrifices yeah, yeah. by walking twenty yeah. meters around a summit. And we're finished as a nation. Yeah, I, mean, I can't even believe we're having this discussion. But anyway, um, but that's good. But, uh, you know, I, I'm just happy that that the beaches are open again, that the fences are down, and we don't have to, as of last weekend, don't have to make reservations at the beaches and all that. Uh, one last quick question, uh, Saifula from LL Tan: Is camping allowed on Sentosa? Is that, or is that something that's under consideration? If it's not. Uh, to address that, um, there there are other parks in Singapore that, that allows camping. Um, right, East with, Coast uh, with, and with many a, others. Yeah, yeah. with a yeah. permit. Yeah. However, in Sentosa, for example, camping or, or any other request, they can always write into our Sentosa um, hotline, uh, be it by by the email or, or by mm-hmm. phone call. Yeah, because some camping has, some has cool camping, some has individual personal camping. So it, it really depends on the request. And then from sure. there, we will process it. Yeah. Well, Got he, it. I tell you what, he's very good at his Saifola. Awesome. Have yeah. you considered a career in politics, Saifola? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I, Neil, I am representing Sentosa for the next 2030 plan. So there are a lot of uh, developments that I couldn't share, but uh, it's in mind. And it is our greatest interest to, to serve Singaporeans. <laughs> And, and also our tourists, you know, doing I love this guy. post-COVID. Yeah. He's good. He's good. All right. <laughs> we'll hey, make guys, it happen. We have... We'll make it happen. <laughs> well, thank you. And, and thanks to both of you for being on today to talk about this gazetting of Fort Siloso. If you have not been there or been there recently, go and see it. Go support our yes. 81st National Monument in Singapore. Dr. John Kwok and Saifullah Kamaluddin. Thank you for being with us today. We appreciate it. We hope you come back on again. Please do um, stick around and, and get on Facebook Live on our page and put in links that you might have or, or sure. any other comments uh, about, uh, about Fort Siloso. We're happy to have uh, your information. But thank you, gentlemen, for being with us today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. you.